These days, our client computers are gonna to need to connect not just to resources internally within the same network, they're gonna to have to connect to resources within other networks. They may need to connect to or allow connections from other computers in partner organizations where we've actually got what we know as a trust relationship between those organizations. They're gonna to need to access the internet and look at information over the internet. And so that means that information is not going one direction out from the client computer to the internet. That information is being retrieved and brought back. So how do we make sure that we're not bringing anything back from the internet or from these other networks that we don't actually want? That's where the firewall comes into play. The firewall is there to protect our internal machines from any unauthorized traffic. We can take a look at the firewall here within this presentation and get to grips with the mechanics behind the basics of all firewalls. Having established now what a firewall will do for us, let's take a look at an overview of basic firewall operations. Irrespective of the firewall vendor, whether it's a host-based firewall such as the Windows firewall or something more complex like on a hardware appliance, they all have the same root basic operations. Here we have a client that's trying to access some of our internal resources from the internet. The firewall will then ask a few basic questions. Is the source IP address allowed? Is the destination IP address allowed? Is the protocol allowed? And is it the correct port for this protocol? Now, if the answer to all of those questions is yes, the source IP address is allowed, destination IP address is allowed, protocols allowed, and it's the correct port, then typically the firewall will allow that data through to the internal computer system. But if the answer to any one of these basic firewall rules is no, then the access will be blocked. Here within Windows, we have a host-based firewall known as the Windows Firewall, or in Windows 7, it's the Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. And we're going to work through a few demonstrations a little later on in this module on how the Windows Firewall can be configured through either a GUI-based interface using Control Panel or indeed by modifying the firewall settings from the command prompt. So please make sure that you check out those videos a little later on in this module of the course. There we've now seen the basic mechanics of a firewall. Now, that's irrespective of whether that firewall is a Microsoft firewall or a physical appliance from the likes of Symantec or Cisco. These basic firewall rules, where is the traffic coming from? Where is the traffic going? What protocol is it using? Is that protocol allowed? Is it on the correct port? Is the traffic allowed? Yes or no? It's the same across all of these products. So there we have firewalls.